Hi everyone, this is Dr. Miller and today I want to talk to you about finding your path in the research and discovering your research problem. And many of you kind of have an idea about what topic you want to study, but you're probably trying to figure out um, which direction to go. And so I want to say that if you look around long enough, you're going to recognize that there's a problem around just about every corner. In fact, the longer you examine a particular topic, and yours in this case, the quicker you are to discover the issues that surround it. The more you read on a particular topic, and you have to read, you have to read as much as you can in terms of scholarly and peer-reviewed articles, the more you'll find the complexities in the simplest of things. And then I believe that the way to achieve a level of depth and complexity in your inquiry, it really depends widely on your capacity to literally make a mountain out of a mohill, or in our case, a complex study out of a simple idea. Now there's two types of research. There's the basic research and there's applied research. And just because it says basic, we already know as we engage in this process that there is nothing basic about basic research. Basic research projects can improve on or expand our collective knowledge on any discipline, where as a result of what you investigate in your study, what you study, we all learn a little something new from your findings and the conclusions that you draw in your paper. Now, applied research addresses issues where you not only expand our understanding, but your study makes immediate contributions to your discipline. Essentially, what you work on um, can either expand what we, um, what we know or advance what we do. But I can tell you a few things of what research problems are not. Well, first of all, we know that um, your study should make a difference in the world and improve how we see it. But research is not about gathering information, right? Those days are over when we were, you know, maybe in middle school and we just had to gather information about things. But we know that the research process has several steps to it, right? So it's not about just gathering information and collecting um, ideas um, so that you're more informed. Research also is not about comparing um, two sets of existing data that's easily accessible, right? Another thing that research is not, it's not about just counting numbers. It's not answering a yes or no question. So if when you formulate your question, somehow we can say yes or no, then that's not really a research study. It doesn't fit that criteria. And then your research really is paramount in your study, your question at least. And so if you do not have a solid research question, and there's gonna be different iterations of your question throughout your study, um, then you're not gonna have a very strong study, right? So in order to have a really, really good study, you've gotta have a solid question. We'll talk about the criteria for developing a research question, and we will vet that process so that your question is solid. Um, but you really just want to ask something that has had not been answered and that you're really very curious about. I think the best way to discover your topic is to do what we're doing. Read the existing literature on the subject. Only through the reading will you find what was already known about the uh, topic and what issues actually exist. And when you read the existing literature, those researchers will oftentimes redirect you to a future uh, research suggestions that you'll find at the end of most studies. Um, and basically when you read, you'll literally, you can literally replicate another project. So if you were reading something, but you want to use, you like what they're doing, but you want to do it on a, in a different setting or a different um, population, or you want to see how a different subpopulation behaves to the same circumstances, you can do that. If you want to apply a different theory to a situation, you can do that. Um, you can investigate uh, where studies may clash. You may be reading several articles and things are not aligned. And so you want to study and investigate those disparities or where um, there's a disagreement amongst researchers um, or challenge research that contradicts even your own view on a particular issue. So depending on your discipline, um, I think it's a good idea to start with finding an expert in your field 
asking them, hey, what are some issues that exist and, and have a brainstorming session or ask them, you know, what, what are things that would be important that you're still um, struggling with in your field that, or that expert is still struggling with in that field. For example, if you wanted to know about social justice and education, I am your person. But if you wanted to ask like ab about um, vision and, and then you might want to, or, or blink rate, then you would check with an optometrist to see like what is, what are some issues that they're currently having um, and they see people day to day. So that would be a great place to start. Okay, so this really is an opportunity for you to essentially find your path. And hopefully you're going to be a one step further than you were earlier in regards to developing a research problem. But it starts with the reading, it starts with the reading. And then you will find your path. 